Sportages. Sport gets smarter. Hello and welcome to another video series episode of Sportages. Today I have with me a very special guest. He recently made history with the Bangladeshi under-19 uh, cricket team. And, I have, and today I have with me is Naveed Nawaz, who is their coach. Uh, great to have you on, uh, Naveed. How's it going? Thank you. Thanks for having me, Matt. Uh, yeah, going is good. We are uh, currently in Melbourne. We are getting into a lockdown for six weeks again. Yeah. So it's a bit depressing, but it's all right. Well, uh, welcome to the show, nonetheless. Hopefully, this tough times will go away soon for all of us, uh, wherever we are in the world. So, yes, I, I guess mean. I'll just uh, get straight into it. So, mm -hmm. you're from Sri Lanka. You coach um, Bangladeshi cricket team, but I'll go all years back and talk about Navi, then uh, talk about how did you start your journey as a cricketer? And who did you look up to when you were growing up? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a long journey, actually. Uh, you know, when initially, uh, when I started to play cricket, that was uh, as a schoolboy, a youngster at uh, my school, which is uh, called DSM America College. And um, right. yeah, as a nine-year-old nine boy, you know, I yeah, yeah. just wanted fun playing cricket, you know, thing like that, you know, just, yeah. uh, you know, playing age group cricket for college and also, and, uh, you know, as it goes on, I got a bit serious and, you yeah, know, yeah. played for the college under team and, you know, so on and so forth, then got picked to play for Sri Lanka under 19s and, and then, um, you know, re realized suddenly that, you know, I'm, I'm good enough to, uh, you know, take this as my profession and, you know, yeah. to, to stop things in life uh, for a period and just try to pursue uh, in the game of cricket because I was passionate of it yeah. and um, I was uh, enthusiastic of to, to try and see what I could achieve out of it. So, yeah. so I went after it and then uh, uh, chasing a dream for a long time. It was a hard period in Sri Lanka where yeah. lots of great cricketers uh, were playing the game uh, yeah. during the uh, 90s and the early 2000s. Um, yeah, so ups and downs, played uh, you know, a couple of games for Sri Lanka and uh, played maybe about 15 plus years of first class cricket and then uh, comes a time where I had to make a decision because uh, there were so many emerging cricketers uh, were coming up with the likes of Sangha Karas and uh, yeah. Maheraja Ordeners and all these guys. Uh, I have uh, yet to establish my a place in my uh, international team as a permanent member. So, so it was a. I knew that it was a bit of a tough time going moving forward, and mm -hmm. then um, I was. Uh, contemplating between uh, continuing to play uh, first class cricket and uh, or whether I should uh, you know go into uh, coaching because I was also passionate about uh, you know teaching and I was passionate about uh, passing on whatever that I have learned in the past uh, to the next generation and things like that so that led me into uh, my last two years of first class cricket I was uh, uh, basically playing as captain coach and uh, a player coach for my first class team at, at NCC yeah. where that was my stepping stone uh, for my coaching career but um, uh, soon uh, I moved out of my club and then started coaching in other first class teams a couple of years and then achieved great success uh, doing that then uh, then I was more interested to uh, you know learn more about about how to manage people and how uh, the the uh, the minds work, and so I did yeah. a lot of exploration, did a lot of reading, and and uh, came to Australia. Uh, I've been to Australia before on playing cricket, but uh, this yeah. time uh, in 2007, I came to Australia uh, trying to learn, trying to study. So I came right. here uh, about three four 
times and did my uh, coaching courses and, and things like that, trying to upskill myself now as a coach, not as a player. Yeah. And then uh, um, landed uh, in a job uh, at Sri Lanka Cricket as uh, the uh, the head of under-19. So, so uh, was lucky enough to uh, get that opportunity and then... Uh, uh, moved on, worked for Sri Lanka cricket for for many years, and then uh, we made another vital decision. Uh, yeah. uh, as a as a, uh, it was not a family. It's not a career decision. It's more of a family decision where we moved out of yeah. Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, in 2015, we moved out uh, and resettled ourselves in Melbourne, and uh, that's when I had to move out of Sri Lanka cricket. Uh, as well because I was relocating and then um, comes uh, my new chapter in Bangladesh so after I moved into Melbourne settled in Melbourne settled my young family and all that then I uh, sort of uh, looked at uh, other opportunities and that's where I ended up in uh, Bangladesh working for BCB. Great you are taking us through your whole journey from uh, day one to as of today but I want to take back, take you back to the Navid who was nine years old. So when you were started playing, who were the cricketers? We all have role models and someone we look up to. Who were the ones you were looking up to when you were growing up? Yeah, see, um, in in the same school that I was in uh, as a junior, as a as a nine, yeah. ten year old boy, uh, I had. Uh, people like Arvind De Silva and Hashan yeah. both uh, two Sri Lankan captains in my school, so I didn't oh, have right. to, uh, I didn't have to look okay. as uh, far. So right, school, school is over. I walk to the grounds and I can see these two legends uh, playing in the senior team. So, so they were my inspiration. And uh, in my school uh, during that time, during the time that I was in school, I had like about four cricketers uh, who. Uh, sort of playing for Sri Lanka. So, uh, so that's, that was an inspiration for me. Like, uh, you know, I, evening time, I take up my bag and just walk into the grounds, uh, college grounds, and I can see yeah. these legends. I mean, they were still schoolboys though, but uh, we knew that uh, looking at them, looking at the way they were playing, that it's something big is uh, on the way for them. So, so yeah. we were inspired. We were you know, encouraged by their presence, I would say. Yeah, that's that's great to have uh, such great players as, as I guess, near you or, or around you. And uh, did you ever have, have a chance as a kid to like, have a chat with them or get tips with them while you were there? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, we would often go and talk to them uh, in school or when we started playing uh, you know, little bit senior cricket, and yeah. they would would always come back to school and have a chat with us, and you know, teach wow. us whatever they have learned. Uh, by that time, they were either playing for Sri Lanka or things like that, but we were still in school. So yeah. uh, we, there were many instances that uh, they would come to our to the college, and uh, because uh, it's where they started their cricket careers as well. Right. So they're yeah. pretty passionate about uh, what's happening in the in the college who are the who are the cricketers that are coming through and right. things like that so they would come uh, watch us train a couple of days and then you know give us whatever advice so we've been in close contacts and also i ended up playing at the same club with these these people you know i ended up oh, playing right. at NC, is a prestigious car, first class team and uh, then i had uh, you know the opportunity to uh, sort of uh, extend that relationship uh, with these two uh, two players from my school so so I would say yeah I mean, we learned a lot I guess um, moving on from there from your school days and the 19 to your international cl- uh, career so I mean you did end up playing for Sri Lanka so as a player what were the challenges you faced when you shifted from domestic to international cricket um, well, um, there were lots of challenges. Like, um, uh, luckily uh, for us, uh, there was lots of uh, lots of cricket at A team level at that time. So we played a lots of uh, A team cricket playing 
in, in, in England, in India, in Pakistan, and very yeah. we may, may be, we can play together because uh, simply because of the fact that uh, uh, there was a very strong senior team at the time and it was yeah. sometimes impossible to break in. And this was, I'm talking about the era where Sri Lanka won the 96 World Cup and yeah. it was a, a massive team till the um, probably the late 90s and um, mm. yeah so uh, yeah so what happened was uh, uh, the transition period was a little bit eased up due to that but uh, due to many reasons uh, maybe the first class cricket structure in Sri Lanka not being yeah. as competitive at, as it should be or, or many reasons I think even now, many countries face that, not only Sri Lanka, but many countries face that. It's a, it's a massive jump when you come from um, your domestic cricket straight into international cricket. So, yeah. so even for me, when I played my first international game in 1998, even I felt that, you know, straight away going into that jump. And it's, it's more of a... It's more of a you know, I would say it's a mental challenge as well yeah. for any player. Like you know, playing in yeah. the big stage and uh, so many expectations, so much of uh, attention on you, and the and the TV yeah. is on, and you know, all this all this pressure uh, uh, is about you know how you're going to handle all these things. So, Absolutely. so we were groomed. We were groomed. We were groomed. I would say that's what uh, Sri Lanka cricket at that time invested a lot of money on. Uh, yeah. On grooming these uh, next bunch of players so we were groomed up to a certain extent but uh, but it was it was a massive jump it was it was a huge jump which uh, which i played my first uh, international in 1998 and then eventually got dropped and and played the next one 5 years later so wow. so uh, so it's hard yeah yeah definitely um so you earlier mentioned you eventually had to contemplate on your future. Um, so what was the time that you started focusing on uh, cricket coaching and how did that happen? How did that process start of you deciding to go into coaching? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it was, uh, it was when I was aging as a player. Yeah. You know, I, I had two options uh, in myself. I was... Uh, I, either I would play uh, my cricket a bit late till uh, till I reach close to forty or something like that, or or else uh, or else uh, you know get into coaching uh, yeah. pretty early because it's a journey by itself. You know, it's not easy just because you played international cricket and just because you played uh, so much of uh, first class cricket. Um, coaching, I would say. It's a different ball game. It's about yeah. uh, you know getting a person to perform at its peak and and making sure that uh, you've got fifteen members in your squad and then you make sure that uh, everyone performs at the peak. Yeah. So it's it's not an easy task. Uh, just because you play uh, cricket, it doesn't mean that you can straight away come in and as a yeah, coach yeah. and and do it. No, yeah, so yeah. so it's a bit of learning to do. So I knew that back of my mind that it's uh, it's going to be uh, a tough thing, and uh, to learn. So since I was very passionate about it, and then uh, I was thinking uh, the way things are moving forward, my chances of uh, of playing for Sri Lanka uh, was very slim because. Uh, because I played my first debut test match uh, in 2002, 2002-2003 season and then uh, uh, as soon after my first test match, uh, I got dropped uh, in the next game. So yeah. even though I scored, my last inning is 78 not out and then the next match I was dropped again So yeah. due to various reasons. So maybe, maybe a little bit of uh, dejection, maybe a little bit of disappointment and mm. all these things going through my mind. Maybe yeah, I didn't absolutely. have... Uh, belief in the system or maybe i i thought that you know i could get into coaching and uh, treat people better yeah you know the i don't want to uh, treat people the way i got treated 
by yeah. some people. You know? So maybe I wanted to change these things as a coach. I could come in and look after my players well and and you know make be fair and be give them the right opportunities to uh, to excel and a lot of things were going through my mind so that's the only platform that i could do uh, all these things uh, was uh, yeah. if i come uh, if i get into coaching and then that is a, a trade that i've been playing uh, for the last 15 years uh, uh, of my uh, career at that time so so maybe that uh, also was uh, a reason for me to get into coaching and then um, automatically uh, there was a position open uh, in my first class team to, for a coach and then I approached the management to see if I could play and coach do a dual role at the moment and then uh, right. they gave me the to do it so I did it for two years and I was enjoying it uh, right. know, looking after junior players in the club uh, making sure that they train hard, making sure that everything's in place. And uh, at NCC, uh, we had, uh, at that time, in 2005, uh, four or five, I was talking about, at that time, we had uh, uh, an interesting team. We had an interesting team. It, there was uh, there was Sangha Karas, there was Tilakaratna, there was uh, right. Arvind Dispa, there was... Uh, yeah, no, Ravindra Pushpakumar, Russell Arnold, yeah. Ruan Kalman. Yeah. Yeah, so it was it was a massive team with big names. Right? Right. So, so my so my first coaching opportunity uh, was with that team, and I was an amateur. I would I have to admit right. that I was an amateur. Right. And I was not a coach. I was just getting into it, and I was just trying to help the players. Uh, right. And also uh, doing a bit of self study about myself, uh, how I would uh, get around this. Yeah, yeah, so that's how it happened. <laughs> uh, there must have been, uh, must have been uh, maybe at times intimidating with these all these players around you and you have to co- coach them uh, and give them advice. <laughs> yeah. how, how did they receive it though? Uh, I want to know that how, were they really um, uh, easy about it or sometimes they, you know, like they get a bit, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, defensive it, it was, or how was that like? Uh, it was good. It was good because uh, they knew that uh, you know, I had a role to play, and I always made myself clear that uh, you know this. I had to. I had this role. I have this responsibility uh, on my shoulders that I have to do it. So yeah, it's not that I teach uh, a person like Arvind De Silva how to bat. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. I just have to have to uh, manage things. At that time, you know, just right. about managing man- things. Right. You know, making sure. Thing is under control and there were also in the club we had a, a bunch of juniors who, who would come in so to make sure that uh, that uh, they also had a place in the in the team that they, their voice is also heard by the others and you know make sure yeah. that uh, there were no uh, too much of bureaucracy in the team to have like you know seniors you know things like yeah, that yeah it was a different role altogether, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it, and I I, I got the full backing from uh, from everyone. I would say so. Uh, right. It was pretty, pretty enjoyable, though. I know it's pretty stressful as well sometimes. Yeah, yeah, understandable. That's very understandable. So you did up. Uh, you did end up um, coaching uh, Sri Lanka's uh, women's team as an international coach. Uh, how was that experience like and uh, would you take us through that? Yeah, it was a very brief period where I uh, was uh, was a consultant uh, for the Sri Lanka women's team in uh, 2008-9, I would say, yeah, yeah. around that. Uh, yeah, so it was a very brief period. It was like a okay. six, seven month, it's a six month period where I worked with them, with the girls. Okay. Uh, yeah, initially when I went in, um, what I thought was uh, by uh, Sri Lanka cricket took over the girls, uh, you know, most recently at that time, you know. Yeah. But uh, at that time, our girls were were not not uh, where they are now. I mean, they are not much better uh, group of players now. But at yeah. that time, uh, you know, they were. 
they were struggling to hit the ball and you know yeah. by nature agrita are very small made and very you know they're not strong girls right okay. so uh, so the journey was i saw that and i i advised the the coaches who were there full time i told them that you know these girls looking at the how the australians the uh, the english girls the new zealand west indies and uh, the south africans new, those girls uh, play cricket and it's mainly a 2020 uh, uh, yeah. culture that they have so yeah. so they, they need to get stronger they need to be able to hit the ball, ball out of the uh, 30 yard circle so if not what yeah. i mainly saw was that you know there would be a ring of fielders inside the 30 yard circle and our girls would always find it hard to pierce it i would they would always hit to the fielder and mm. then uh, you know had no option but to get themselves run out so every game you would say see about four or five run outs wow. so what's the reason just because of the issue uh, was their strength they had didn't have the strength to hit the ball out of the circle and then the oppositions would uh, sort of capitalize on this situation and bring the field close in and allow yeah. them to sort of put the put them under pressure for runs so i think uh, that kind of experience i mean not uh, i didn't spend too long with these uh, girls to to rectify an issue and uh, and see uh, growth in them but Uh, of course i highlighted most of the issues that i saw and that was the reason where i was put in as a consultant uh, right to uh, give them uh, direction so i gave the feedback uh, as soon as i did these two world cups with them and the feedback was given to uh, the authorities that you know these is are the areas that you should be working on and uh, you know about uh, their standards of strength and how they got to build strength and have the confidence to sort of uh, hit the ball uh, you know as it comes uh, as a batting group uh, yeah. things like that uh, and then i moved on out of uh, uh, the women's cricket and then i was yeah. in a different year but I, it's good to see them grow they they're pretty good now i mean there have yeah. been many good coaches uh, come and go uh with working with sri lanka cricket uh, uh with the women's team so i think they have improved over the years that's uh, that's uh, great um so i guess moving on from there uh you did also coach uh, sri lanka's under 19 uh, men's team so yeah. what are the different challenges facing women's cricket as compared to men's cricket in your coach ex- experience um see it's it's a total different ball game i would say yeah it's a total different ball game um, men's cricket and women's cricket is totally different and, and i guess i'll say is what are were your challenges as well as a coach in uh, these two different uh, cricket uh, scenarios yes. especially uh, especially as a coach uh, it's about the attitude when you're working with the girls it's uh, mainly the attitude of of uh, of the of the female athletes whether yeah. they they want to become uh, athletes that okay. is that is that's what i what i saw because our girls at that time were not athletes they were they were just a group of girls who enjoyed to play cricket right they just came up and uh, and i'm talking about 2008 right it's not yeah. current now it's it's turning to be quite different now yeah. but uh, so as a coach uh, back of my mind i had uh, a vision in my mind and this is right. where this is where these girls uh, have to be if uh, if they are to compete in the international arena and i have seen uh, uh, england australia new zealand india also and how how these teams how strong they are and yeah. uh, their, their skill and their ability where they are so so first of all before doing all that the um, these girls need to be uh, athletes they need to be uh, able to coordinate they need to be able to run they need to be able to swing and they need to yeah. be able to bowl the ball throw the ball things like that so that was lacking at that time we were in a very poor standard so 
So as a coach, and uh, you know how it is, uh, the Asian culture and uh, how yeah. uh, the female athletes uh, would approach things and things like that. It took some time to change uh, in Sri Lanka. I think it would be the same uh, in Bangladesh and Pakistan, India and all that. But mm, it took a yeah. little bit of time in Sri Lanka for that culture to change and, um, you know, for 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 female cricket to uh, to get adapted into the system yeah um, it's it's now i think uh, fully incorporated into the into the system, system but, uh, yeah but uh, but i would say um, when you look at the, the the skills that you require the the tactics that you play with and uh, and the, to the whole athlete that you're looking at, yeah, but it's in a different level. The men's cricket and female cricket are in yeah. two different uh, levels. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So now moving on, I'm sure the viewers want to know more about your recent success as a coach of the Bangladesh Under 19 Under 19 team. So could you just uh, tell us about your journey uh, with that um, with the team? Uh, sorry, with the Bangladesh under 19 and how did it start? How did it start for you? Um, well, uh, the I got the assignment uh, to working with Bangladesh in 2018 July. So by that time, I was working uh, in district cricket in in Melbourne. I we moved uh, to Melbourne and then right. uh, I was already involved in uh, working. Uh, in uh, in district cricket in Melbourne, so at that time I got a call from uh, from Bangladesh from a person that I've been known for a, for a long time. That uh, because during my playing career I have played uh, uh, premier cricket in Bangladesh as well as a professional ah, right. cricketer. So right. I knew this uh, guy from a long time, and so I got a call from him and asking me. Um, if I'm interested to uh, do a gig in, in Bangladesh. So then learning more about it and then uh, then I accepted the role. Right. And uh, yeah, so uh, when I got in uh, to Bangladesh, uh, what I saw in them was uh, was raw talent. Yeah. Um, these boys were, were really, really skillful, but uh, but it is not structured. It is not, uh, you know, they were not aware of uh, of putting things together, organizing things. But but uh, they could hit a ball. They could some some of their bowlers were good, and they were the uh, enthusiastic bunch. So right. I had a look. I had a look at about more than more than sixty odd uh, cricketers when I initially right. went in the first year. So over a period of time, juggling through, bringing players in, giving them opportunity, seeing how what they could do under pressure, and then um, yeah, um, yeah. So so we gradually pruned it down to about twenty twenty five, uh, a group of twenty five players uh, uh, from whatever that we saw, and then the main thing that I saw in them was the the eagerness the the yeah. enthusiasm to learn so even if uh, got one of them and and working with them they would always write it down and you know make sure that um, you know they come and uh, ask me next time how how is that going uh, am i making progress and things like yeah. that so that's that's something um, in in that uh, in the bangladeshi cricketing culture that these boys are very eager to learn because because they know that uh, you know playing cricket and playing cricket for Bangladesh could change everything for them. Their their whole life and their whole uh, family, everything will totally change. So it's a huge opportunity. Yeah. So they were they were up to it. So so yeah. my uh, the first hurdle was uh, achieved in in about six months. I was able right. to uh, group twenty or. I would say about twenty-five uh, players who wanted to be there, who who yeah. wanted to be there. But that's that's the main thing, you know. I don't yeah. want anybody who don't want to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And then that that would make my job harder. Absolutely. And then, uh, 
Yeah, so, and then slowly we started, uh, in the first year we did all these, you know, we knew that uh, the uh, we are playing, we are, we are sort of uh, um, preparing these boys to play in South Africa. So we knew uh, what are the challenges with my experience playing in South Africa a couple of times. I knew that, uh, you know, the challenges that they are going to face in South Africa. So... Um, so the first thing we started uh, with these players were before we did anything, got all my batsmen together, and then um, and uh, got them to play all these back foot back foot uh, shots. Yeah, to deal with the sh- deal with the short deliveries. Yeah. I would say not to just block them, but to score runs off them. So that's yeah. that's a uh, that's a practice that we started one and a half years ago when we when we started preparing for the 2020 world cup right that's a that's a practice every time before we start we would always have a net uh, a sign for the short ball we would have a concrete um, uh, a granite slab on or anything right. like that and every batsman is assigned to play at least 100 balls in there trying to deal with it trying to deal with the short ball trying to score runs off the short ball right and and we did it for one and a half years we we Basically, uh, every day in day out, when you go into the net, everyone goes into that net and yeah, and you know, get hit a couple of times on the yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely bodies and you know then they learn to deal with it and some of the sometimes <laughs> some of them have come to me and told us so this is not going to work and <laughs> you know the, you know this ball is uh, bouncing too much or or you know various excuses but I said uh, no. No, you got to deal with it. This is a part yeah, of yeah. your training. You just do it and 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 come. So so over a period of time, I yeah, also noticed that they were getting comfortable with it and they were getting better at the shorter ball. And yeah. because uh, it is difficult in Bangladesh to replicate uh, these conditions, because in Bangladesh yeah. most uh, most of the tracks that we play on are knee high. You know, yeah. the ball wouldn't bounce yeah. above the knees. So these yeah, yeah, players, yeah. By, by nature, when they came in uh, to play, they are all front foot players. They are very good on their front foot. And yeah. uh, they are early, early committed onto the front foot because they know that even the ball is, uh, even if the ball pitch is short, that it wouldn't bounce that high. Yeah. So they can feel everything on the front foot. But I knew back of my mind, it's not going to be the same in New Zealand. It's not going to be yeah. the same in Australia and South Africa so so we had to adapt to that and the first year we did our homework and we uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, ironed out uh, the areas that we need to to uh, sort of sharpen on and then uh, by that time uh, I had done uh, under 19 World, World Cups with Sri Lanka I had uh, done three right. under 19 World Cups with Sri Lanka yeah, 2000. Right. 10, 12, and 14. So probably um, in the 2020 under-19 circuit, uh, out of the coaches, I was the most experienced coach because I knew exactly yeah. how these tournaments run and I knew exactly yeah. you know, what are the skills needed uh, for the under-19 cricket and what are the skills that uh, each and every team will have and, and how... Uh, how what skills that we need to be above the line so uh, so i always had a yardstick uh, in my mind thinking that uh, india is uh, india and australia are the two uh, strongest under 19 outfits uh, in the past right. so i always had back of my mind india pakistan and australia these three teams yeah. so as long as we can uh, come close or challenge these three teams. Yeah, I knew I knew that we are right up there. So we played uh, against India in the Under Nineteen Asia Cup 2018, yeah. and uh, we played in uh, the Under Nineteen Asia Cup 2019 final against India. We uh, lost it by just one run. Yeah, and then uh, we played them again uh, in in England against a triangular final. That one. Uh, yeah, we scored 274 and India chased it down in the last over fourth ball. So, right. so I knew in my mind, okay, what, whatever that we are doing is working 
for us. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the my yardstick uh, at the top level of under nineteen cricket was was India was always the top level because they yeah. had like you know five players who been uh, picked up uh, from the uh, for the IPL auction and they got yeah, so yeah. many so many young players uh, who's been coming through the ranks and uh, uh, boys who scored double hundreds in the first class uh, system in the Ranji system in India so yeah. so so on and so forth so they're, they're a very strong group of players so if I always mentioned this to my boys told them you know if you can get can get that close to India that means uh, you know we are there yeah. we just yeah. need to be what we can do to beat them so we had uh, quite a bit of run we played uh, india in 2018 asia cup semi final we lost to them in 2019 final uh, yeah. asia cup then in, in england we played five games in the triangular with them and then that was uh, uh, so we had about six seven games uh, against india and uh, yeah. we won two or three games and we lost uh, maybe more than we won but yeah. uh, it was a learning for us it was a learning for us uh, to see how we could plot to beat india if we meet yeah, them in yeah. the right world cup and back of my mind uh, we played bilateral series uh, before we came to the world cup against uh, sri lanka new zealand uh, and uh, many other teams but uh, england also but we uh, we always thought that we are far ahead of uh, all the other teams but our main challenge was uh, like i told you before before to play australia to play england uh, to play uh, sorry india and and pakistan those are the three teams that uh, we were looking at yeah that uh, where we will meet them in our standing and then uh, how we are planning to beat them so uh, yeah so that's how we got in and then uh, when it comes to the world cup in uh, 2020 uh yeah we in our group uh, we had pakistan we had pakistan we had uh, uh, uh zimbabwe and uh, and ireland i think yeah, yeah. so uh, so uh, my main idea was to uh, how we can end up being the group leaders so that yeah. was our first we never thought of becoming uh, world cup uh, getting into the world cup final or oh, becoming yeah. champions we never looked that far we we as a group we never discuss anything about going into finals or anything like that we only wanted to uh, go in on that day and play our best cricket and always yeah. stay at the with the ball so that's all we discussed and back of our mind our first uh, target to reach was to become the uh, the group champions that's our target so so we went around uh, in our group and uh, in south africa with with a little bit of rain up and down and all that so we yeah. achieved that in run we right. became the group champions and then uh, then we knew at the start of the tournament we knew that okay if you become group champions we will play uh, we will play the uh, uh, we almost knew that we are going to meet south africa because in the other yeah. group afghanistan they had a pretty strong team as well and yeah. then the south africa was the next team but uh, we knew that uh, right that south africa second and and we will eventually play them in the quarter finals and uh, we had planned for that game as well so uh, so it was uh, south africa in the quarter final and new zealand in the semi final so we managed to beat uh, both of them and we came into the final and then uh, uh, to keep the long story short uh, yeah i was we had a few discussions we had like four five days before the final uh, uh, to to prepare so we while training and things like that that uh, um, our boys were very enthusiastic as i told you from there they were they were very keen and you know they yeah. knew that you know they had the opportunity to win a world cup where where bangladesh has uh, not done before so they knew the opportunity they had in their hand was huge and if they could pull it out uh, that means that they will be remembered in uh, their whole life as some cricketers who's done something uh, for their country and you know so on and so forth 
and uh, you know, so many phone calls coming from their country and I could not control that because sometimes I don't understand the the language as well yeah. you know so so many people talking to them and so many uh, that this and other so uh, from the start of the tournament uh, I uh, I put up a rule within them uh, I told the boys to uh, try and adhere to that uh, we cut off all the social media with the players so and the all right yeah no, no social media post and and not even getting there so most of the boys followed that they they never got into social media because uh, it's undue pressure coming to them and these uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, young boys they can't uh, handle this so we cut it off uh, i told them to cut it off for two months and they all agreed and they all thought that uh, yeah that is a need of the hour and they they bought into it and then we cut ourselves out of social media for two months and then um, so I made sure that when it comes to the final that, you know, don't talk to anybody. Just be with your team as much as possible. And yeah. your coaches have to tell you whatever you want to tell. And just because it's a final, it's nothing else. It's just another game. We'll approach it that yeah. way. And um, the only change that uh, in the approach that we took uh, in that game was uh, when I uh, actually asked them, Okay, uh, okay, skill. Okay, we have planned and we have come through this tournament and we know exactly what we need to do uh, as a batting group, as a bowling group, and a fielding group. We know exactly what, what we need yeah. to do. But I'll ask you what's up to the intensity, intensity of the game, that how the, the bat, bat one what intensity the Indians play the game, Yeah, can we play above that? And then we had hours of hours of discussion about that. How do we do that? And yeah, I have a question. Yes, that's similar Indians, to... they, they are pretty high. In... Yeah. I have a question like regarding that as well. Um, um, like the Bangladeshi team we saw, the under-19 team we saw, was the most aggressive and fearless Bangladesh cricket team we have seen it at any level. So is that something you yeah. consciously instill in them as a as a group of players to be fearless as cricketers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In this World Cup, uh, we we were talking about it a lot to how we should push the in intensity of the game and then yeah. how we saw that in the in the Indians, the Indian cricket team always does that. Their their yeah. level of intensity is really high, you know, but. Uh, but we always thought that our intensity was a little bit lower compared to yeah. compared to the Indians because uh, they would always always push you and they would always be uh, not at a not at a uh, level there where you are you know not uh, playing on in inside the boundaries of your of the yeah. game but, but still uh, with a very high intensity in whatever you do so that is something. Uh, that is one of the one of the areas of our game plan when we came into the final to play against India. Yeah, we all we told everybody that whatever you do, do it with with a high intensity. Whether you're whether yeah. you're walking on the field, whether you're moving in between overs, whether you're you're just a fielder picking up the ball and throwing it back yeah. to the keeper, whether you're bowling. Your intensity has to be high. You always looking to take wickets. You always attacking the batsman, putting the batsman under pressure. You might get hit, uh, but uh, don't uh, worry about that. Yeah. Just yeah. make sure that you are on, on your clock again. And uh, I think I think that's what worked for us uh, in the final to be able to keep India down for 177. Yeah. Um, uh, such a strong batting team for that that much was the thing. I mean uh, that intensity. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing how they have transitioned over the years and and the level of cricket mm -hmm. the Bangladesh cricket is playing at the moment. Do you think uh, the Bangladesh so like IPL Bangladesh Premier League had to do something with that as well in terms of uh, grooming them and increasing their confidence? Uh, yes, of course, because see, in 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 anything, when when people see opportunity, when people yeah. see opportunity, they get hopes, isn't it? 
Yeah, absolutely. So most of the time, what what's happening in India right now is that uh, the cricket fraternity uh, can see opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. They know that uh, that opportunity it's it's like a it's like a basic as a parent. I mean, if your kid, you know for a fact that if you educate your kid, then if you you know, you become a doctor or an engineer or whatever yeah, yeah. it is. And, and in, in the Asian culture, I'm talking about yeah, uh, absolutely. India, yeah. Pakistan, <laughs> yeah. and all that. So you make, uh, because you have the trust in that, uh, that stream that you know that yeah. if you make your doctor that he'll have a good life. He'll, he will be a professional. He will work uh, and he will make money where he can look after his family and things like that. But, uh, but now, in lately, I think India has achieved uh, with the IPL is that bringing the trust of the of the players. Now, uh, even the parents, you know, they know for a fact that if your son is good enough and has got the skills to play uh, uh, international cricket, or even even as a first class cricketer in the in the system in yeah. India, you know, you can you can uh, make it a career. So that trust yeah. has made been. Yeah. I think uh, with the BPL coming into into Bangladesh, that's what created uh, among the players. The players knew that you know if I'm good at playing cricket, okay, I'll pursue that. I'll become better. Then um, I can play these tournaments and I can one day, you know, uh, be a professional cricketer. Uh, you know, even if I don't play for Bangladesh, there are plenty of opportunities I yeah, can absolutely. and uh, make it a living. You know that kind of thing. So it's an inspiration, basically. So and all these uh, the Bangladeshi international cricketers and also the foreign players uh, yeah. who come and play in the BPL. Yeah, uh, basically, it's an inspiration for the young cricketers who are who are grooming. I mean, learning from these players and and uh, you know applying that trade so yeah to answer your question yeah of course i think uh, bpl is a huge factor i think yeah from this i'll come back to the under nine team again so the players you're grooming you're not just grooming them as cricketers you're also they're teenagers so you have to group them with other life skills as well so is mental strength something um you look into as well um and it's something that you really focus on as a coach or there's a team uh, of uh, professionals working with the cricketers, the Indian cricketers on those side of things? Yeah, mental, mental strength is a massive, it's, uh, it's a massive thing. But, uh, but the thing is, uh, in mental strength, it's such a massive area. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge area and uh, it's a very uh, sort of... Uh, um, very sensitive area as well, you know. Yeah. You know how, how it works and how it doesn't work, and you know how you can uh, sort of groom it and things like that is is pretty unknown. Sometimes you don't yeah. know uh, what to do and what not to do. So so we kept it very simple. In my um, philosophy, uh, I kept it very simple. Uh, Allowing players, like if you had time to allow players to to make mistakes, if they had something in their mind that you know I need to do something like this, uh, yeah, this yeah. is how it bad. And sometimes, as a coach, I think the otherwise. I think uh, you know these are the areas that he should uh, he should uh, sort of fine tune. But sometimes uh, we have. Uh, dispute among the players you know he might not yeah. agree with me yeah, as absolutely. a coach but what do i do at that time yeah okay i can't force him to uh, to adapt to uh, what i'm saying so i need to allow him to go for a period i need to allow him to to give him that period for him to realize it yeah you know yeah. So, so the player is uh, player next time when he comes to me once he does that and if he can't reach success the next time he approach me, he will come with an open mind. Yeah. Right. So this is one of the, the main areas that I allow them to go. And, and during the first year, maybe the first year and a half, very closer to the World Cup. Yeah. We uh, sort of allow them, give them the freedom to, to play their own game 
and sometimes uh, give them the freedom to do the mistakes and then do a bit of evaluation with them about how it runs. So this is this is the mental strength. Mental strength, I would say, is the is for you to figure out yourself. If you know yourself in and out, if you know yeah. what the best me, if you know the best me, yeah. that is your mental. I mean, if you have a confused cricketer in your team who doesn't know what to do, who, who doesn't know what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, where, how do I, should I play, he's always wondering, then, then I would say that's a weak mind. He's not uh, mentally strong. But if I have like two years to discover all these things, to discover uh, who I am, I mean, obviously you wouldn't. Even if you play 15 years uh, of international cricket, you'll still yeah. be learning. Yeah, but but it's yeah. a percentage. It's uh, you you still uh, are convinced that you know this 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 at least for a short period for 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 a six months or a one year period. Okay, this is my game and this is what I follow at this moment of time. Yeah, and this works. So if the players are convinced with that it'll be easier for them because uh, then it's easy for as a coach for me to have my game plan and uh, i know that this player suits this situation yeah and uh, this bowler suits this situation this uh, who's the bowler who's going to bowl in the depth for me who's going to bowl yeah. with the new ball for me who's going to who is the spinner who who is uh, mainly assigned to take wickets who comes and bowls in the middle who's yeah. the batsman who bats in the in the death overs to up the run rate for me? So, so it is important that the player and uh, as a coach, me both are in the same page yeah. at uh, at their levels of thinking. And then I find uh, that's the a mentally strong cricketer who knows him basically, who knows who he is, yeah. and then uh, he knows that he can deliver this. You know, absolutely. And the other part of yeah, and the other part of uh, mental strength is is the fitness. I would say, see, um, uh, a tired player, a tired cricketer, his mind can wander. If you're tired and if you fatigue and if you are if you are not fit, then you can't think straight. I mean, it happens to us as well. I mean, if we yeah. If someone keeps talking to you as soon as you start running with somebody and then uh, once you push your heartbeat up to a certain level and then you can't make clear decisions in your mind if your if your heart is beating faster and, yeah. and if you're if you're sort of uh, you know not in control over that but, yeah. uh, but if you are a fit person and if you're if you're a much fitter person then even at a high intensity where you are pushing yourself into a high intensity, but your, your thinking uh, patterns you can be in control of if you're a fitter person. So that, those are the two things that we work about uh, how to have mental clarity and your fitness. We always had a benchmark uh, on our fitness uh, side of it and then uh, pushed everyone to achieve those benchmarks on a on a on the time period which they are given, and to figure out who they are. So those are the two sides that we worked uh, in uh, it in, um, in the mental side of things, and we also had uh, uh, things like asking themselves uh, three questions. We put out three questions which they should ask themselves uh, yeah. on a on a quality performance. If if you see something that you are doing is not going right for them. Uh, how to correct it? Ask them the three questions. So we we agreed on these three questions, and every time uh, they did something wrong, uh, yeah. got themselves to ask the three questions. Was it the if in a batsman perspective, uh, uh, if they played a certain shot and on got out, so he would ask himself uh, questions like this, like. Uh, he would ask himself, uh, "Was that ball there to be hit? Did I make, did I play the correct shot?" Uh, if the answer is yes to that question, then he knows that uh, his execution is not up to the mark. 
he knows that the ball was yeah. there to play that particular shot but he did not execute it right yeah and if the answer is no to the question then he know that he played a faulty shot the ball was not there to to play that shot he yeah played a faulty that would give you direction to uh, for your next day's training yeah. you know whether you should practice on your execution or you should be focusing on your on your on your decision making skills you know mm-hmm. things like small things like that which work for us yeah yeah absolutely and it and i guess it showed at the um at the the highest level that the bangladesh cricket team is ready and they sh- and they did it and uh, as you mentioned you guys were playing with india and you had this you lost some games against them but i uh, you won the the most important game yeah that yeah. that mattered so um with the recent win uh, it's um bangladesh cricket has definitely gone to new heights and i'm um, i'm sure the viewers out there and the people out there in your opinion want to know who are the 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 players they should look out for in the future who do you think um, are the future of bangladesh cricket um yeah i think there are many there are many players that uh, bangladesh can groom out of yeah. this squad and they have identified that already they know that and yeah okay yeah i would say uh, boys like uh, tanzit tamim uh, tauhid ridoy uh, joy mohammad hasan joy yeah. akbar ali akbar ali is a, is a brilliant brilliant captain brilliant wicket keeper brilliant number seven yeah, back yeah yeah unbelievable player and shoriful islam left arm fast bowler uh, yeah. rakibul hasan left arm spinner so there are many many good players right. like if, um, i think bcb uh, has uh, recognized this and they has uh, drawn up a program of how to groom their players try to bring them to the next level Yeah that's great i guess uh, we have to wait and see and um, i'm sure uh, the bangladeshi fans are excited to see them as well uh, for them to transition from the under 19 team to the men's cricket team and yeah uh, of course it's a jump it's a massive jump so it's not yeah. that uh, it's not that you can uh, it's not that uh, they have learned something to plug and play yeah, yeah. They, they can't take the same set of skills that they have and and go into the go into international cricket and and uh, accept themselves to become successful no it's not going to happen like that yeah. so they need to uh, again once again once they in the transition what they need to do and they are talking about a different level of cricket yeah uh, in international cricket so they need to upskill them they need to get to where international cricket is to be successful there yeah absolutely uh, so we almost kind of coming to the end of a uh, uh, of a chat um so the last question i have for you is uh since your achievement um what's the future for you are you going to keep coaching the under 19 team or the next step is to move to the to the men's team uh well i don't know because uh because uh, uh it's a, it's a it's a open role because i work uh for the last uh, uh, I mean for you as a, as a coach as a coach like uh for at any stage like yeah. are you planning on moving to the next stage next level Yeah it it depends on uh, the opportunity I get but I'm yeah. I'm pretty passionate about I'm pretty passionate about uh, working in development areas where right I can see where I can put things right where I can help people develop where I can help people to structure their their skill They, right. they have got a skill and if they uh, to structure the skill i think i can uh, be a massive help to them so so i enjoy working in that area so maybe in the in the development area so i'm mostly interested in uh, working in that area but it depends on what what the future brings to you so yeah, at yeah. this moment i'm working for bcb so so i'm you know doing most of their development uh, work for them so so leave it at that and i assume you're working with the inter- uh, bangladesh under 19 team for the near future at the moment yeah i've i've signed uh, uh, for three more years with them so i will probably uh, yeah work work in the development uh, 
uh, areas of the aquifer. All right, great. With that, uh, we come to the end of our chat. Uh, it was a pleasure having you, Naveed, and it was amazing talking to you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank and, you, uh, And we wish you all the best for all your future endeavors. Thank you, and you too. Yeah, thanks a lot, Naveed.